to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Flemington Assembly of God. We are glad that you could join us this evening to celebrate Christmas through this beautiful play that this uh, uh, beautiful children from our church have put together. You, you should have received a piece of paper with uh, the songs that we will be singing tonight. And feel free to join us, join me tonight. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Jesus, for this night where we are reminded, Lord Jesus, that uh, our Savior came to earth with one mission, to bring light and salvation to earth. Father, we're so grateful for your Son, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we welcome you tonight. We ask you that you may take any nervousness away from the children. And everything that is done tonight may be for your glory. In your name, Lord, your name, Lord, I pray. Amen. Heart the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sin reconciled joyful all ye nations rise join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Was to certain poor shepherds in fields where they lay, in fields where they lay, keeping their sheep in the cold winter's night that was so deep. No.
crib for a bed the little lord jesus laid down his sweet head the stars in the sky looked down where he lay the little lord jesus asleep on the faithful. Can you sing with me? For alone is faithful. For he alone is faithful. For he alone is faithful. Oh Christ the Lord. Enjoy to the world the Lord is come let earth receive her King can you sing it out let every heart let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature sing he rules he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of the consciousness and the wonders of his love and the wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love merry christmas It's good to see you here tonight. And the kids are having their production, so they're going to be putting that on. And I think you will be blessed. I really do. Now, they've put a lot of the workers, they, they put a lot of hours in this. What, what do you see back there? You know what that reminds me of? <laughs> I'm sitting here, and I'm looking, where's Waldo? <laughs> Anybody remember that? <laughs> the books and you start looking I'm thinking he's here somewhere I don't know did you put him in there Christy yeah <laughs> she's not gonna give it away well anyhow I'm going to turn this over to them are you guys ready tour of Yule Todd and Carol's Christmas Shoe Tree Farm.
On the first day of Christmas, my true love sent to me a partridge in a pear tree. Oh, Carol, that just looks beautiful. Can't nobody decorate a Christmas tree, tree like you, sister. Well, Mama always said I had the touch when it come to decorating of any kind. I just can't help it. But I'm thinking I need some turquoise converses right around here, you know. Turquoise is so the in Christmas color this year. I didn't know that, Carol, but I do know we got a young bunch of youngins coming by today from the Douglas Fir Middle School to take a tour of the place and drop off some shoe donations. Maybe there will be a pair of those turquoise colored ones in the bunch. One can only hope. Yule, what about peacock feathers? You think some more peacock feathers would really make it pop? You know. Peacocks are so in this year. They're the new turtle doves. Sounds good. Yes, and Ronin was exactly what he was doing. He just gets so excited when we start decorating for Christmas, flying around here like a chicken with his head cut off, talking 90 to nothing. He almost knocked my tree over. Then he really would have been a run-in from me. Oh, Carol. He can't help himself. I love it, though. He's always had the heart of a child on Christmas. Yeah, whatever. On the second day of Christmas, my true love sent to me two turquoise peacocks. Yo, yo, we got in our big drop-off shoes, 12 basketfuls, just like the disciples. Whew, I think we have enough shoes for 5,000 folks. These could be the leftovers for next year. Maybe so, Todd. And this is just the first day. If it keeps up like this, well, we'll be a shoe in to win the war for the business with the most donations. Todd, you know that's not why we collect shoes for folks at Christmas. Whether we get 5,000 pairs or just one, it's about making a difference in somebody's life. Showing them we care about them from providing a for a basic need and have. I know, I know, but, you know, the Chamber of Commerce... They give out that big trophy and all, and I figure we might as well win it as soon as anybody else. No, Todd. All right, yo. It's kind of story from the Bible, though. You know, Jesus was preaching to all those folks. He realized they were getting very hungry, so he fed them. He showed he cared about them for providing for a basic need they had. And then while they were still there, he shared the gospel with them. You? You is exactly right. I may have a way when it comes to decorating. But you is just so elephant with your words. Hey, Carol. Uh, I think I'm going to go get the rest of the baskets for you. I'm just going to drop these <laughs> off. Oh. Todd, oh, I'm, you I'm, knock I'm, my I'm tree sorry. over. I'm, I'm going to knock you. I'm sorry.
can't stop these shoes. All right, students, students, come on, stay together now, gather around, do not wander off. We are about to begin our tour shortly. Well, good morning. Oh, good you must morning. be Principal Poinsettia. I am. Welcome to Yule, Todd, and Carol's Christmas Shoe Tree Farm. I'm Yule, and over there's my sister Carol and my brother Todd. We're so happy to have you all visiting with us today. Oh, and we are so delighted to be here. And let me just tell you, I love the name of your place. It is such clever Christmas marketing. Oh, I just can't wait to check in here on Insta. We, you don't have to check in here. We ain't all fancy like that, but we do have a guest book you can sign. And if you want to put a picture of your face in it, well, that's just fine with me. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Let me introduce you to the students that I brought here today. These wonderful group of children are from the Douglas Fir Christian School, and they're all part of an extracurricular group called the Secret Service. You know what they do? They look around the school and they try to find themselves some secret projects that they can do. You know, kind of like those random acts of kindness, if you will. But the most beautiful part of the whole thing is they never tell anyone who does the work. They keep it a secret. Or on the down low, as my students like to say. Well, ain't that just awesome? I tell you what, we have a few service projects they can help out with, and I ain't keeping that a secret. <laughs> Mr. Yule, you are such a stitch. Well, anyways, as I was saying to you on the phone the other day, I really wanted to bring these students down here so they could see firsthand a business like yours and how you impact the community in such a profound way with a project like your Christmas shoe tree. And you know what? The mission you guys have really fits our mission because the people who come here to get a donated shoe never even know who brought them in to give away. Well, bless my brickled britches. You just made my day. I'll go ahead and take you on a tour, and after that, you can stay as long as you'd like. That is wonderful. Thank you so much, Mr. Yule. Carol, I'm about to go take this group of youngins on a tour. You got things under control? Sure thing. Have fun. All right, let's follow Mr. Yule, kids. Come on. Stay together. So then Holly told Candy that Ginger told Angel that Mary was not going to go to Nativity Grace's spend the night party because Ivy totally forgot about it when Hope invited them to the movies last week. Hey, are you girls with that group from Douglas Fir Middle School? Yes, ma'am, we are. Where are they? Well, they just left. Oh, Christmas tree. Joe, we're lost. What are we going to do? I've got to text Holly and tell her. Does your phone have GPS? Chill out, Celeste. We're not uh, in the woods. We're at a Christmas tree farm, and I can totally see our group walking up that path over there. Yeah, no worries, girls. I was just about to say they let to go on a tour of the place with my brothers. Carol of the Bells, thank goodness. Hey, how'd you know my name? Most folks around here call me Christmas Carol because I just love singing Christmas carols. But I really like the ring of Carol of the Bells, too. Get it? <laughs> Ring <laughs> the bells. It, I got it when I ain't even trying to get it. So where are we again? The last whatever space to get at. We're at Yule, Todd, and Carol's Christmas Shoe Tree Farm. And I'm Carol. And those are my brothers, Yule and Todd. It's part of the Christmas project we're doing for Secret Service. Shh. Silent night, Joe. I may not know where we are, but I know we are not supposed to tell anybody what we're doing. Silver bells. Can you please remind me why we are best friends? Jingle jangle, Jill. That totally hurts my feelings. Uh, why don't you girls work this out while you catch up with your group? Uh, I don't want you to get in trouble or nothing. All right, you. You. Y'all got some stragglers here, and I'm sending them your way. Thanks, Miss Christmas Carol. Have a holly jolly Christmas. So when Hope got back from the movies, she called Noelle, and Noelle told her, Decorate your tree with shoes. Listen, 
listening at your Christmas carol, pretty as partridge singing in a pear tree. So guess what? What? Well, TV station just called. Action News 12 is coming out to do a story on the shoe tree. So uh, I better go get ready. Ready? Get ready for what? <laughs> you ain't ever get ready for nothing. <laughs> Well, if that pretty newscaster Silver Bells is coming out to interview me, well, I gotta put on the dog. <laughs> if she gets a load of me, she might sing her own Christmas carol. All I want for Christmas is a date with Tom. Well, have mercy, boy, while you're putting on the dog. Why don't you turn on some Christmas music? This way it's nice and festive when she gets here. Sure thing.
Well, you're getting set up. I'll go try to find the owners. Rudy, where's my trailer? I was thinking you wouldn't need the trailer since we're three blocks away from the station, plus the fact you spent two hours getting ready before we left. Rudy, you don't understand. Being in the public eye every day is so demanding on one's appearance. And I need protection from these harsh winter elements. My hair is already going flat and my lips are getting chapped. I can't work under these conditions. Okay, Sylvia, I'll see what I can do. This is back to where we started. Wonderful. Well, hello there. Excuse me for just a minute. Hello, sir. I'm Rudy Rains with Action News 12, here to do a human interest story on your Christmas shoe tree. Pleased to meet you, Rudy. My name is Yule Loggins, and what we actually do here is a Christmas shoe tree drive. My sister Carol is in charge of it. She can get a little testy when it comes to people not getting things right. Okay, thanks for the heads up. I'll keep that in mind. We're just tickled pink, or should I say red and green, that you all want to put us on CV. The pleasure is ours, Yule. Meet our correspondent, Sylvia Belt. Oh, I know who she is. We watch you every night. Mr. Loggins, I am overjoyed to make your acquaintance and overwhelmed to be able to bring the story of your Christmas shoe drive to the masses. Well, that's just great, Miss Bells. But we don't sell molasses, just shoes. But come to think of it, that might not be a bad idea after all. Shoes and molasses? Bet nobody's done that before. Hey, everybody! Heavens to Betsy, brother. What in the world? Just a little something I call styling and profiling. Gotta look my best for a little Miss Sylvia Bells. Todd, this is my brother. Todd, this is Mr. Rudy Reigns and Miss Sylvia Bells. Well, lights, camera, action. I'm ready to roll them. I'm sure obliged to meet y'all. Miss Bells, get on my roof and adjust my antenna. I watch you every night. So I've heard. Rudy, I'm going to go wait in the van until you're ready to start filming. I need to refresh. Okay, we'll be ready in a few minutes. Bye-bye. You will, I need to get some information on how this got started, how many shoes you get a year, etc. Well, I was just about to go tell the kids of that. Well, I can tell you where it got started. I mean, I don't like to brag, but... It was my brainchild. Oh, here we go. You see, Rudy, it's like this. I've always been a barefoot kind of guy. Never like wearing shoes. And any time my mama or daddy or anybody else got me a pair, well, I just give them away. Everybody enjoyed getting them, and I enjoyed giving them away. One day I said to myself, Todd, because that's what I call myself, Todd, what if you could get those to give up those shoes to those less, less, less fortunate. Well, psh, it was like a million watt light bulb went off in my head and I told Carol and you and well, the rest is history. <laughs> Actually, I wrote a little song about it that Carol, you and I perform around this time every year in the farm. Seems like perfect time to sing it. Yo, you ready? Goodness knows. Might want to get those cameras rolling. You won't want to miss this. Carol. Where you at, girl? Come on. We got some singing to do. Bring that banjo. Carol Hoggins, what in the world? Gotta look my best if I'm gonna be on TV. Hit it, Todd! <laughs> when I was a boy in Tennessee, I recall the good Lord saying to me, do what you can for those in need. You'll find the key to win happy. I love Christmas and I love bare feet It only makes sense for this country boy Giving of himself by giving of his shoes To help someone else Two, three, four, go! I'll have a blue
Nativity Grace's mom said the spend the night party was going to be postponed till Ivy got back from her vacation. Girls, girls, what have I told you? You must keep up. You just missed one of the most amazing performances I've ever seen by our hosts, Yule, Todd, and Carol. Oh, amazing. Oh, we're so sorry, Principal Poinsettia. I'm trying to keep up. Think of the halls, Joe. What are you trying to say? We could sing it again. Oh, oh well, 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 hold, don't, don't trouble yourself. I, I, I don't think we need to do that, but it, it was a wonderful performance. Thank you, though. As much as we would love that, Todd, we really need to get some footage of Yule with the kids. Then we'll grab some individual interviews. I'll text Sylvia and tell her we're ready. Yeah, let's get this thing moving. These feathers are itching me to death. Hey, Rudy. Uh, I was thinking... Yeah, Sue and I, maybe we could be like co-host, because, you know, I'm all dressed up, and we clearly got some chemistry and all. Hold it right there, Todd Loggins. If anyone's going to be co-hosting with Sylvia Bells, it's going to be me, because I'm in charge of the shoe tree anyhow. Hang on, Carol. Hold up one second. We all know that I'm the best-looking thing in this family. Can you imagine how this face will look on TV? Hey, hey, no need to quarrel over this, you guys. I think we'd better let Sylvia handle this on her own. She might be a little intimidated by the enormous presence you both have. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're pretty look electric. We're good. <laughs> Sylvia, we're, let's open with you introducing Yule, Todd, and Carol with some info on the tree farm. Then we'll gr get some shots of Yule with the kids. Okay, Rudy, how's my hair? Is it big enough? Oh, I think I need more lip gloss. In three, two, one, action. Hello, people. I'm Sylvia Bells. Going where the action is with Action News 12. Keeping you up to date and in the know with everything Christmas. Season. Today, the action is here at Yule, Todd, and Carol Loggins' Christmas tree farm. But wait. This isn't your ordinary old tree farm. For the Loggins have incorporated the spirit of giving characteristic of this most wonderful time of year into the very fabric of their business. Experiencing it for myself today has left me utterly speechless. However, I must press through my emotions and unabashedly spread the word of this most incredible lend a helping hand, or should I say shoe, to help your fellow man mission. Your logins, tell us about your Christmas shoe tree. Well, um, right after I tell everyone that this farm doesn't just sell trees, they also give away shoes to those in need. They even decorate a tree with shoes, hence the shoe tree, as a glorious token representing their love and faith that they share with others. Well, I'd love to tell you. And we are all excited to hear all about it, you all. But before we do, the Action News 12 team has a spectacular Christmas surprise for everyone. We have invited hip-hop sensation Scissor, Paper, and Tape <gasps> to perform his smash hit Christmas Rapid. 
I think it's a perfect fit for our true tree story. Come on out. Yeehaw, I just Woo! love that song. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Good news. A peace and salvation. Good news. The God of Israel reign. Good news. If you're not for real, I bring. Good news. Christ the Savior is born. Shall be upon his shoulders. Good news! A peace salvation. Good news! The God of Israel reign. Good news! If you're not for behold, I bring. Good news! Christ the Savior is born. Oh, 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 coming out to do this for us. No problem, it's glad to be here. By the way, I got some shoes to donate. Perfect, thank you so much for supporting us this way. You know what, you are one of my favorite groups. We are so blessed that you want to donate some shoes. Come on over, I'll get you fixed up. Rudy, I'm exhausted. That monologue completely drained me. I need to go back to the van so I can regroup. Okay, we'll be ready in five minutes. Yule, I'd like to get you explaining to the kids what you do here. Sounds good, Rudy. Thank you. All right, you ready, Yule? Just relax. In three, two, one. This tree farm has been in our family for many, many years. When we got old enough to take over, I felt the Lord speaking to me, and told, and I wondered how we could tell the story of Jesus in this tree farm. You know, there's a lot of stories in the Bible that talk about feet and shoes. Can anyone tell me a time in the Bible that they heard it talk about feet and shoes? I remember one time in my Sunday school teacher talked about the gospel, the shoes of the gospel of peace. I didn't really understand it, though. That's okay. What's your name? Joey. Well, Joey, in Ephesians, it talks about the armor of God, and part of getting ready is putting on the shoes to help us to carry the good news. These shoes that we hang on our tree also help us carry the good news to every person who buys a pair. And then when they come here to buy a pair, and then we can tell them about Jesus while they're still here. One of my most favorite stories in the Bible is when Moses was taking the children of Israel all through the desert. And you know what the Bible says? That their shoes never wore out. Now that just simply amazes me. Yep, the Lord knew they needed their shoes to last in the desert, and there are no shoe stores in the desert. So every time they looked at their feet, they remembered that God was protecting them. I hope that every time someone looks at a pair of shoes they got here, they remember that Jesus loves them. I like the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. I love that one too, Jill. What a beautiful story of love and humility. You gotta really humble yourself to wash someone's feet. It's a wonderful way to show someone how much you love and care about them. And the thing is, the person getting their feet washed feels just as humble as the person doing the washing. My dad went on a mission trip to Africa last year where he brought shoes to kids in an orphanage. He told me that when they gave them the shoes, he and his team washed the kids' feet before putting the socks and the shoes on them. That's amazing. You know, at Christmas time, you remember the shepherds and the wise men who were the first one to see Jesus and realize who he were who he was. They were the first beautiful feet. You know, I feel like all I can do with my feet in my life is that do what God made him to do. Walk and tell everybody I see about Jesus. Angel. 
I bet you all are ready for a little break. So, Carol, why don't you and Todd take them down to the snack bar for a little something something? That sounds good. I could use a little something myself. Come on, y'all. That was so great, Yule. Thanks, Rudy. It really means a lot that y'all would care enough to take the time to come to a story on us. I'm so excited to see how many folks we're going to reach this year, too. I, I hope that everyone gets to hear our message. I, I am, too. I, you actually helped me today, and I didn't come for a pair of shoes. How's that, Rudy? 
Well, I saw how passionate you guys are about what you do. You truly care about people and love them. In my world, that's really refreshing to see. Rudy, what you're seeing and feeling is the love of the Lord. If there's anything in me, it's because of him. I try to love him as much as I can and let him love people through me. Rudy, God loves you, and it's no accident you were here today. I was thinking the same thing. Well, if you have time, you want to go on a walk? Sure, I'd like that. Sylvia, I'm going to go with you for a couple of minutes. Holly told Candy that Ivy said that she overheard her mom telling Tibby Grace's mom that the whole spend the night party was really supposed to be a surprise party f for me up on the housetop. Isn't that awesome? You knew the whole time, didn't you? Well, now you can help me plan my own surprise party. Um, okay. Uh, I wonder where y'all went to. No telling. Well... You guys, this has been the most delightful day that we have had in such a long time. Thank you all so, so much. But we have to be getting back to school. But would you please, please tell your brother how much we appreciated the time he took with all the children today? Here I am, Principal Point said. There you are. It's been a joy having you all visit with us today. We should do this again next year. Oh, my. That would be wonderful. We will count on it. All right, students, gather round. Okay, Rudy, my hair is only going to stay this big for about five more minutes, so let's get going. Sure, Sylvia. Before the kids leave, let's get everyone <coughs> waving and saying Merry Christmas. All right, everyone gather around Sylvia. <laughs> well, uh, is this close enough? How about this? Where's my lip gloss? In three, two, one, action. And so we find ourselves having to say so long to Yule, Todd, Carol, and their Christmas shoe tree. But please, feel free to stop by and see them any time during the Christmas season. You're sure to be overwhelmed by 
the charm and charisma of the Loggins family. Shoe donations begin today and will continue throughout the holidays. You can stop in and drop off or pick up a pair of shoes at any time during their hours of operation shown on the screen below. I, for one, have felt my heart laced with love and my soul forever touched by my experience here today. And so, I too have decided to donate my shoe. Truly, you can't stop these shoes from sharing the good news. For Action News 12, I'm Sylvia Bells. Merry Christmas! And cut. That's a wrap. Don't you mean a Christmas wrap? Okay. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Good news! Of peace and salvation. Good news! God of Israel reigns. Good news! You're not for behold, I bring. Good news! Christ the Savior is born. The kids did this do a good job. We have to say that. It's not easy to practice and learn and then come and portray and 
display the, all the hours of work that have been put in. And of course, some of them have put in hours of just having the scenery done and doing all of the decor. Others, again, of learning their lines and ah, becoming the character that they're portraying. So it's good. I was thinking about that just before we dismiss you. And uh, if you want to, tomorrow is again. Uh, tomorrow morning at 10.30, we will have the kids perform tomorrow again to us. And uh, if you want to come and join them the second time, do so. Uh, bring somebody else along. Let them enjoy it as well. What an easy way to share the gospel and the goodness and kindness through this story. Uh, God spoke with Moses in Deuteronomy. It's recorded. And I'm going to read the easy read version on it. Deuteronomy 29.5. He led you through the desert for 40 years. And in all that time, your clothes and your sandals and shoes did not wear out. Now, the story is about the shoe Christmas tree and so on. Some, sometimes you drive on, you see on the high wires, that people have taken their shoes and their sneakers and stuff, thrown them way up there uh, just to whatever purpose or reason it is. But when God spoke to Moses, he said, Moses, you're forgetting something. I want you to tell this to the people. Ordinarily, we don't do... Uh, much of anything as far as our shoes are concerned, except uh, we get, wow, those are nice shoes, what you're wearing, and so on. But other than that, we, we just put them on, and we wear them, and go our merry way. But for 40 years, 40 years, that's a long time, the children of Israel wandered around in the desert, led by God, to come to the point where they would enter into the promised land. And this is where he says to Moses, for 40 years, I've led you through the desert. I had you going through different places. And your clothing, your sandals, your shoes did not wear out. Now, I don't know how many women want to wear the same shoes for 40 years. And we're prone to fashion. But in a need as such, when you're out there in the desert, you, you begin to look at it and say, you know, this is a miracle. This is not just a story about shoes. This is actually a miracle. How many times have you had shoes and they all of a sudden they're your favorite shoes and then they just wear out and get a hole in or something, the strap uh, rips off and so on, and you let it have to let it go. But none of those things happen. The, there's a simple miracle of the shoes saying, look, they didn't wear out. This is the hand of God in there. Simple shoe miracles are still happening today. The, uh, I talked with my daughter and asked her, well, this shoe box thing and the shoe uh, tree, well, what is that about? Because I know Frank and Graham, Samaritan's Purse, they do shoe boxes and they fill up with goodies and they send it over to the, the uh, different uh, African nations where the kids can enjoy what comes in that shoe box. Well, Simple shoebox miracles happen today, not in that way, but in, in a way of you sit here today and you ask yourself, or I'll ask it for you, what miracle do you need? Do you have the need of a miracle today? No, it can be a number of things. Jesus came into this world to be able to minister miracles to you all. That's how much he loves you. He says, I've come into this world that people can get saved, freed, restored. That people can, wh what does John 3, 16 say? For God so what? Loved the world that he did what? He came from heaven to give you a miracle of salvation that you can be with him in eternity where he is also. He came into this world to give you a miracle, to give me a miracle. In Exodus chapter 15, Jesus reveals himself, Jehovah reveals himself saying, 
I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. He came into this world to give you a miracle, a miracle of healing, a miracle of empowerment and restoration. He came into this world to come and give you prosperity. We may have a different concept of what prosperity means, but I look into the word of God in Genesis 26. Abraham's son, his son's name was Isaac. Isaac was now a grown man, and Isaac here was going out in the fields, and they found themselves in a time of famine. Famine. It was a drought. Nothing was growing. And the people were in desperate need. But what's interesting, it says, and Isaac sowed his seed in the year of the famine. Well, you would say, that's ridiculous. Why would anybody do something like that? And in that same year, he harvested, says the word of God, a hundredfold. You see, God came into this world to give you a miracle. And it may be dry. It may be lack of rain or lack of sunshine, whatever it may be. But if you believe, God says, I will bless you a hundredfold with miracles into your life. I'll prosper you. Jeremiah 29, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. The plans of good, the plans of not evil, but to give you a future and hope to let you prosper. Let me just throw the last one in. Jesus came into this world to bless you. To bless you. Malachi chapter 3, he says, if you give your tithe and your offering unto the Lord and obedient to the word of God, the statutes, keep them, that the Lord will bless you. And you say, well, well, what kind of blessing is that? Such a blessing that it says you cannot contain it, which means it is more than you can handle. You can get such blessings from God that it just overflows in your life. Jesus came into this world. Now we celebrate Christmas and in a couple of weeks here, everybody's going to get together and, you know, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and have different foods and preparation and so on made for that. But remember, the real reason he came in here is not for family gatherings, not for good food and turkey and so on. He came into this world to meet your needs. Number one, salvation. He wants that everybody is saved. Healing. He wants you to be whole and strong. Prosperity. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to move forward. Blessings. He says, if you allow, I will just bless you and bless you and bless you and bless you and bless you. And you won't be able to handle all the blessings I'm giving. They're overflowing. And you can share those blessings then with other people. So kids, you did a great job. You did a good job tonight demonstrating and singing and playing here. Awesome. But Jesus came not just for this musical. Jesus came for you personally. For salvation, for healing, for prosperity, for blessing. Stand with me, would you please? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you in Jesus' wonderful name for this evening, for these children, how they presented the gospel in this music. And I pray that it has some meaning to all of us. Most of all, I pray that today, tonight, this hour, this moment, those that are not saved would receive Jesus into their hearts. Those that need healing would receive the miracle of healing in their life. Those that need to prosper, those that need to be blessed, 
May it all come through the name of Jesus who came into this world to present and offer all these gifts to us in Jesus' wonderful name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Would you lift your hands, please? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, give you Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God go with you.